Hey everybody, this is Michael Espinosa and my little cat Melina. She's such a little cutie pie, isn't she? And what's that, Melina? You want to show me your favorite lock? Oh, but you don't have thumbs, so you need me to pick it up for you. Okay, okay, so it's this one, right? Oh, this is your favorite. Oh, and you're bored. Okay, cats have short attention spans, guys. I'm sorry. But how about I talk to you about this lock instead? Okay. So, this is a really interesting lock. Um, officially, it's called a Bunker Hill Shackleless Padlock. Um, I can't speak to the Bunker Hillness of it, but I can tell you that shackleless is a bit of a misnomer. As you can see, it does have a shackle here on the back. Um, it goes right through this little uh, slot, for lack of a better word. Um, and basically the idea, though, is that it is shackleless in terms of when you lock it up on something, the shackle is flush with the back of it. It's going to be back here or up like that. I mean, either way, the point being that no one's going to be able to attack it. You're going to take a hammer to this or that or any, any part of the side of it, and you're not going to get anywhere. A hacksaw is not going to get anywhere. You can't attack the locking mechanism by attacking the front of this lock. The only part that's locking it in place is the kind of the, the, the hasp, which is kind of the, the, the tail piece on the core here, which is buried deep inside this part, and this retaining pin that holds the core in. Those are really the only two parts that are engaged in locking, and you cannot get at them from the front. So uh, how does this lock work? Um, now this lock comes from Harbor Freight, the, the hardware kind of supply place. Um, it's a really good lock. So this is one of Harbor Freight's kind of proprietary, I guess, locks, one of the things they make. They also make the US General padlocks, um, which is, I think, uh, in terms of picking, the US General is definitely a more secure lock, but this one has it beat in terms of durability. So we've got a key here. It's a, uh, let's see, I think it's a six pinner. Uh, yeah, six pinner. Anyway, so you've got a keyhole right here on the side. It's pretty much the only entry point onto this lock that's visible when it's locked onto something. And what you'll do is you'll put the key in, you'll turn it, and you'll actually slide the core all the way out. Well, not all the way, but as far out as it'll go right now, and we'll get more on that later. And see, that opens up your slot right there, and basically whatever you were locking it onto, uh, you would make sure that, it's, of course, its diameter was appropriate to accommodate the shackle, and then you're going to slide this through it, turn the key and remove it and bam you are locked up tighter than a bunker hill I guess <laughs> it's a very nice lock guys this is a really good lock um, the only accommodating factors you are like factors of accommodation you're gonna have to consider are the fact that uh, it's it's about 2.1 pounds um, or about I guess I'm sorry about like two pounds one ounce or something like that anyway point being it's it's a decently hefty little padlock um, or shackleless puck lock I'm sorry um, it's a decently heavy lock so whatever you're putting it on, it better be able to accommodate that weight. Furthermore, uh, whatever uh, locking hasps you're threading this through, or whatever uh, locking, uh, anything you're threading this through, chain, gate, whatever, they've got to be able to fit in here enough that this can slide through it. I mean, you've got to, it's got to accommodate that as well. So if you've got the right criteria to use this lock, I can't advise against using this lock. It's a pretty solid thing. So let's look at this core, though. Um, this is really interesting. You see right here on the top there's a little track, um, little line above the actual cylinder of the about where the plug is in the housing. Um, and that is held in place by this retaining pin, uh, which is accessible with a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, and that just keeps the core into the lock, just keeps it from sliding all the way out. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, for now, I know what you're actually interested in. Let's get this thing um, clamped up in the vise and we will get her picked and see how that works out for us, shall we? We don't need these keys. Let's see what we can do with a pick. Okay, let's get this thing sealed up. I've got a, a vise. I also got this vise from uh, from Harbor Freight. And no, this is not a promotional thing. It just happened that way. Um, they happen to have a really, uh, really good desktop vise. I hear a cat over there where cats are not supposed to be. Yeah, um, there's a falafel. Falafel, get... Okay, cool. That was That's what I meant for you to do. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I had in mind. That's... All right, cool. Anyway, um, so I got this vice here. It's a, they call it a Central Forge vice. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm willing to guess that's also just a, another Harbor Freight thing. I don't know. Um, maybe it is its own thing. I, I, I have no idea. I am out of the loop. Anyway, so let's get this vice suctioned down to the table. There we go. It's not going anywhere. This is very sturdy. Um, the lock is securely in place, um, so we imagine this part here uh, would just be the back wall of some sort of, or the front, the, the, the front rather, of some sort of building, maybe uh, some people use these for high security um, storage, some people use them on uh, gates, things like that, so we can imagine that it's, it's flush with a gate right now, and the only part I can get at is this keyhole. Let's see if we can get into it, shall we? 
Um, so I've got, I'm going to use a uh, Peterson pry bar for top of the keyway tension. And I've got, um, this is actually a Sparrows uh, Bogota. It's a 25 thousandths. Uh, you may notice the handle is not one of Sparrow's thermoplastics or one of its non-handled, like from the tuxedo set. Um, these are 3D printed by my girlfriend, Kelsey, our uh, diligent and talented camera Kelsey back there behind the camera. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so let's, uh, let's give this a shot. Let's see if we can't get this thing picked up. Picked open. Picked out. I, I don't know. Whatever. We're going to pick the lock. <laughs> let's see. All right. So very, very light tension on the keyway. This will overset very quickly if we're going to try and rake it. Uh, all right, let's see if we can get some action in here. Let's get a little, a little raking going on. And is it open? Is it open? Is it open? Or, oh, tension fell out, but I think the keyway is actually still unlocked. Let's see. And that, there we go, guys. It is open. It uh, tensioner kind of popped out because I was using such light tension. But yeah, the lock is open. It's open that easily. Um, okay, let's pretend that was a fluke. Let's, uh, let me relock it. I can just stick my nail in there and lock it up. Uh, let me try that one more time. We'll make sure that was not a fluke. We'll make sure it's thoroughly locked. This is going nowhere. It's not, uh, you know, it's thoroughly locked. Let's put some light, light tension, because that might have just been a little, little fluke, little movie magic. Let's see what's happening here. And my tensioner escaped! <laughs> okay, so when I said light tension, uh, let me restate that. Light enough to not overset heavy enough to keep it in the f in, in the effing keyway. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> do, do, do. And of course I'm going to ruin a perfectly good video now because I'm going to, oh, nope, 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 nope. Aha, there we go. We got it open. Okay, so in terms of picking, guys, this is one of the least secure locks I've ever played with, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, the keyway is so wide I could park my car in there. Um, there is a... <laughs> Uh, and yeah, the bigger concern there is that I have a car. I don't. Don't worry. We're all fine. <laughs> um, but no, the um, the keyway is so wide, you can fit pretty much anything in there, no problem. Um, it's not a secure lock in terms of picking. But guys, lock uh, uh, thieves don't lock pick. Um, lock picking requires patience and dedication and all that stuff. And um, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. So if you're concerned about thievery and you see someone pick this thing open... Don't worry about it. It's it's maybe a thief will come along and lock pick you, in which case I'll be wrong. But um, I've never heard of it happening in today's day and age, and I think you're going to be fine. But now I want to show you a little something else, which is why I got out this screwdriver. I'm going to show you how easy it is to take out the core on this. So you just attack this little retaining pin here on the side with your screwdriver and just get it. You don't even have to take it all the way out, actually. I'm only going to get it a little bit of the way out so I don't have to keep up with it. Um, so it's now sticking out a decent amount from the lock without having actually come out. And look at that. You can slide your core completely out of the lock. Um, now you could probably uh, disengage this core entirely from its housing and get about to repinning it and such. Um, and, you know, put something a little more secure in there, get some security pins, some spools, some serrations, anything in there. This oversets pretty easily, so I think getting some serrations in there would be a really nice touch to make it a very high security lock. Um, you got the little track, of course, for, uh, for the housing for the retaining pin. Um, and you've got your tailpiece here. This is the whole, the crux upon which your lock is hinged is basically that little piece right there that rotates when the, uh, when the housing is rotated or when the plug is rotated within the housing. Uh, interestingly, yeah, this is all the lock right here. Uh, the only part that's housing is a right around the core and around this. Uh, the rest of this is all the tailpiece, essentially. Um, yeah, so you could probably get some better pins in here and make a better lock. Um, as far as security goes, like I said, though, guys, this is not a bad lock. Um, a thief's going to come at your lock with bolt cutters. They're going to come at your lock with a hacksaw. They're going to come at it maybe even with a... Uh, with a hammer, with a, a torch even, who knows, but they're not going to get through this puck lock very easily, not without somebody hearing it, and hopefully that someone's either you or conscientious enough to let you know about it. Um, they're not going to come at it with lock picks, in, 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 is my best guess, and so luckily <laughs> the lock's only major vulnerability, which is picking, as you can see, is probably not something that's going to be exploited um, anytime soon. So if, if I were down to rate it, I would say um, in terms of security, it is a solid lock in terms of pickability, which is just kind of for lock sport enthusiasts. 
it's it's easy, guys. This is a great starter lock if you want to just feel good about yourself. Um, I can see why it's my cat's favorite. I think she can get her whole paw in there and just open the whole thing up. <laughs> just put it on her cat food. Uh, she'll uh, she'll get in there. She'll get in there, and then she'll start stealing my stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, thank y'all so much for watching, and I would highly recommend uh, Harbor Freight for one of these vices. Really fun vice. Um, and I would definitely recommend getting one of these locks either to secure your valuables or just to show off at parties because it's cool looking, it's easy to pick, and quite frankly, you'll look like a badass if you can do it, and it's not that hard. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.